I very strongly support um, and uh, echo the concept of a global commonwealth within the space of internet and cyberspace. I think that um, the notion that we have the poten a potential future where all of us are interlinked, connected, and can actually can exist um, whereby any individual in the world can talk to, communicate with any other single individual groups of individuals is a, a vision for a future of a borderless world which I, I'd like to participate in. And I think that the legal principles that make that possible already exist within the frameworks that we have. Um, in making legislation, I would urge that we be careful about focusing on today's technologies to the detriment of thinking about the future of where our technologies will take us. Because as we've seen, the communications tools and platforms that we're using today were tools that we didn't envision 10 years ago. And we may find that we know that technology moves faster than law, faster than regulation. And we may find that we're building systems that aren't able to accommodate, building legal systems that aren't able to accommodate the technological changes. Or worse, that we'll be creating eddies or restrictions that force um, technologies to grow in a way other than they would if they were living in an unfettered and global commonwealth of ideas. I'd also like to point out um, the concept of the free movement of ideas and how some of our trade laws and co corporate and commercial laws potentially act as restrictions to those kinds of ideas, whether it's things like uh, the commercialization of human biology or uh, the effects of the entertainment industry on copyright. Um, in a space of a cultural commons and, a, and a, a global commonwealth of ideas, innovation comes through the potential to have access to other concepts and other, other communities of ideas. And just as the technology has walls, we also have the potential to put walls on our culture and walls on our concepts. And I would urge that we think very carefully about uh, not creating those blockades in the process of responding to special interests that may exist in this country or in other countries in the OSCE region. Um, lastly, I think that from the U.S. perspective, it's very important, again, to lead by example. So we have the potential ourselves to create in this country a set of a basis for a, an open and participatory network of communications. And that in itself is potentially under threat. So we see uh, ongoing discussions about net neutrality, about tiered systems for access. I'm not saying that those discussions are necessarily clear in terms of what is right or what is wrong. In some cases, policy is really unclear as to what the best solution is. But the principle should be the guiding, the, the guiding principle that each of us has equal access is, uh, is very, very important to sustain. And lastly, um, as regards international engagement and the question of legislation, I think it's very important to look closely at the potentially contradictory roles that the State Department and Commerce Departments and other, other kinds, other departments uh, and the military as well will play when thinking about how we should be shaping the internet. We aren't necessarily even within the United States government uh, uh, in accord. Thank you.